All right, I'm back for a second <laughs> Chrome extension video, and I'm gonna pick up right where I left off, which is I wanna add something called a background script. Now, the truth of the matter is a background script can do a lot of things. It's co the content script, I'm saying what I just said at the end of the last video, but to repeat myself, the content script is code that executes after a web page loads that you can affect and manipulate and work with the actual content of the web page itself. A background script is a script that loads when you launch Chrome and it's listening for events associated with the activity of using the Chrome browser as a piece of software itself. So um, one of the things I can do in a background script is I can listen for things called a browser action, there's also a page action, there's all sorts of kinds of events, but a browser action is actually a way of listening for, for example, I can add a button to the menu bar with my own design and I can listen in the background script, which I'm going to call background.js. I can listen for when the user has clicked that button and then I can make something happen potentially on the web page or I could make something happen within Chrome like close all the tabs or something like that. Lots of things are possible. So what I want to do in this video is show you instead of having in the previous video I made a content script that runs immediately when you load the page. Instead, what I'm gonna do now is have a background script that has a button, and when you press the button, it causes the content script to run. So it doesn't run immediately, but only when you press the button, all right? So let's see if we can make that happen. So the first thing I need to do is tell manifest.json about the background script. Tell manifest.json, so I think I need comma, uh, background, can I have more than one background script? I think I actually just say background, um, right? Somebody will correct me. And then, is that an array? It's an array. No, it's, it's, you can't, so unlike content scripts, I think you can have multiple content scripts. A background script is one background script. You can't have multiple background scripts per, atten, per extension. You have multiple JavaScript files associated with a background script, but just one. So this is just an object with, J, uh, with the JS property, and I'm gonna call that um, background.js. Okay. I think this is good. So now I need to create that JavaScript file, background.js, and I'm just going to put console.log background running, just to have something in there. Okay, so I have this background script. Now, oh, this should be an array. Same problem I forgot before, content.js, this should be an array. So let's not make that mistake again. And now what I'm going to do, coding train extension, I'm just gonna call this coding train extension two. Um, so now I'm gonna load that unpacked extension, background script, it's in this folder. There we go, I didn't get any errors. Google Chrome cannot prevent extensions from recording your browsing history. So, oh, I, I, I clicked allow in kind of by accident. Okay, so now this is running. All right, this is very exciting. <laughs> Let's go back to this page. Um, and hit refresh. Content script ran. Oh, Chrome extension go. Oh, but where does it say? Oh, I, I totally console log background running. How come I don't see background running here? So here's the thing. The content script is a thing that executes inside of the actual web page. And so the debug stuff is available in the JavaScript console. The background script is running as part of the browser as a whole. It does not talk to the JavaScript console associated with a given page. Instead, you're gonna have to go back to debug any console logs in the background script in a different place. Let me show you where that is. So what I'm going to do here is now, uh, oops, sorry. I need to go to this page, right? Chrome slash slash extensions, and then, oops, oops, oops. So uh, what I, I'm looking for actually what, what you see down here, which is inspect views background page, and I don't see that. The reason is I got this wrong. This should be scripts. For content scripts, it was JS. For background, it's scripts. Whatever, this is the specification for how a Chrome extension works. Let me hit all that drama for nothing. Let me hit reload. Now, same thing, I can go here. Chrome extension go, that, that console log that's in my background script 
is not appearing in the JavaScript console in the browser, but if I go back to the extensions page, I now see that it says inspect views. I can click there, and now I can see here, I can look at the JavaScript console for the background script. So this is just an important piece. Debugging is tricky, because you've got to remember, is this part of the background script? Is this part of the content script? Where is it all happening? Okay, now, let's actually add a browser action. What I'm going to do is I'm going to now, in, the, uh, in manifest, I'm going to say browser action colon, mm, what is it, what is it, what is it, what is it, what uh, is it, browser action, I think that's, oh, default icon maybe, icon, default icon, default icon, uh, and then I'm going to give it my um, coding training.png. So one thing I can reference, by the way, what, I, what I'm not showing is you can have assets and different media things associated with like a content script and you can add that in. We'll get to that I guess at some point with future examples. But right now I want to have a browser action and I want the browser action to be associated with a button. I need a PNG for that button. So did I already put this, um, sorry, I have to navigate to this. Right, so I, I have this PNG file that I'm going to put in now into there. So you can see here now I have manifest.json, background.js, content.js, and I have this PNG file. So now if I reload the Chrome extension again, we can see, look at that, all the way up there, there's my button now. Anyway, I could design it a lot better. It probably has all this, that PNG has all this extra, but now if I press this button, I'm triggering a browser action. So I need to listen for that browser action where? Does the content script listen for the browser action? No, the content script is sandboxed. It's walled in. It only knows what's happening here. So I need the, the background script to listen for when I click the button. So let's add a bit of code for that. So if I go to the background script, what I add to that is uh, it's, I think it's chrome.browseraction.mount clicked, on clicked. <laughs> I have it written up there. <laughs> uh, add listener um, uh, button, like, you know, button. I'll just call this button clicked. And then I can, um, I can write a function, the callback function. So let me give you some more room so you can see this. Um, let me make this a little smaller. I can write this function called button click. This is me making up a function now. This is my made up callback. It could be an anonymous callback. Ooh, there's a camera up here that I just hit. It could be an anonymous function written in there, but I'm going to do this in a simple way. And I believe, and then I can just say console.log button clicked. So let's do that. So let's do that. Um, and ah, so there is actually a thing that I'm forgetting here which is that, well, let me just add this first. So if I go reload the extension, and then um, I, uh, I go inspect views, I'm gonna put this over here, and I'm gonna click the button now. Button clicked. So you can see above my head here, that message is coming out when I click the button. So I now have a function that's listening no matter where I am, but what if I wanna know like, oh, when I click the button, what's the current tab that's open? And actually this callback gets an argument which has information about the tab. So I'm gonna actually just console log the tab object. So we can see I'm gonna reload and I'm going to click the button. And now we can see, look at this. So there's all sorts of information that I can now get about the particular tab that I'm on. So you really have in the Chrome extension, in the background script, which is making use, by the way, this is part of the Chrome API, right? Chrome.browser, that's not just like available JavaScript code wherever you are, but by default, and I, at some point I need to come back and look at the Chrome API reference, but this is where I can um, tr do things like listen to events. Okay, now, what I need to do is tell the content script about it, but the content script oh, is stuck inside of its wall. It can't reach out and know about this except for the fact that there is a, and this doesn't really go in this list, I guess if there's other like sort of concepts or APIs, uh, 
Chrome API. So there is, um, we saw there's like a Chrome dot browser action. That's one thing we just saw. There's another thing, which is uh, the messaging. So there's a messaging API. There's a way that I can send a message from the background script, which really should go here. There's a way I can send a message from the background script to the content script and vice versa. So that's what I need to do. Let's look at how we can do that. So, oops. So what I'm going to do inside button clicked, I'm going to say um, chrome.tabs uh, send message. So this is the um, this is the this is from the Chrome uh, extension API. The Chrome object, there's an object called tabs. So I could send a message, I think, to all tabs, actually. But what I want to do is just send a message to the particular tab that I'm on. So I'm going to say something like this, tab.id, right? And we can see that where I debug that here, ID 95. Each tab has an, an ID number. And then I can say, I want to send a message like, hello. So I can actually send this message. It's going to go to that content script. Um, but it's probably what I want to do is send the message as an object. So um, text, hello. I mean, this is silly. So, Because you can send a lot of information. You could imagine there might be a lot of information going on that you could send here. So let me show you this. So I am going to uh, now send this message. So once I have this code that's sending the message, I need to receive that message. And where I receive the message is in the content script. So I now need chrome.message receiver. Uh, what is it? I have no idea. I have it somewhere on the wall where I taped up a lot of this code. Ah, runtime. <laughs> so there's an event. There's a Chrome runtime on message. This is a particular kind of event, and I need to have a listener. Add listener, and uh, and then I need a callback. So I can say like got message. So I can now write a function called got message, and it receives what? It receives a lot of things. There's a, it's kind of like, it's similar to um, a get or post request. There's three arguments that go here. There's a request, there's the sender, and then there's the send response. This is kind of boilerplate-y. Uh, and then, ah, so where do I get that message? So the, um, in the background script, this JavaScript object, let message, right? This message going, this, this stuff going in there is in this request. Variable. Now I'm pulling this from an example, so I might actually call this like the message. So I could say uh, console.log dot, console message.txt. So let's just see if the message comes through. Let's see if the message comes through. So I'm going to reload. <coughs> I'm going to reload the Chrome extension. I'm going to go to this page. Chrome extension go. I'm going to click the button. Hello, 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 hello. Yes. <laughs> I got a message from the background script to the content script, which means I can say something like if message.text equals hello, then only do this stuff then. If, message, if I get a certain message, now run this code that alters the page. So here we go. I am going to, I have to reload the extension. <coughs> I'm going to refresh the page. Now notice the content script has not executed. All of the paragraphs are as they were. Now I'm going to press this button, and now they're all purple. So I could immediately make it that every time I press the button, it picks a new random color. It just replaces all the text with something. It reaches out to an API and goes and gets the definition of every word on the page on WordNick and then makes those like pop-ups all over the page. There's so many things I can do. This is the basic idea. There's too many videos about Chrome extensions I want to make because we barely scratched the surface here. But at least now we've seen manifest.json is the overall configuration of the Chrome extension. What is it allowed to do and when is it allowed to do it? The content script is JavaScript code that lives within the actual content of any given web page that you happen to be on. And the background script is code that runs as soon as Chrome is launched that can listen for various events and do a variety of other things to affect how the browser as a whole behaves. 
So what we've seen in this example, which is really, again, just scratching the surface, is through a, uh, there's different actions. The browser action, there's also something called a page action. I'm going to get to all this stuff later. But the background script can listen for a browser action, like pressing a new button, and then send a message to the content script to do stuff to the content. So basic idea, I'm going to come back, uh, and in the next, whoa. I did not trigger that sound effect. Ah. <laughs> but apparently everyone's really excited by this Chrome extension that I made. So with just these two videos, I think you could probably make something kind of interesting, quirky, and creative that subverts and alters the way one traditionally browses the web. So if you make something, share it with me on Twitter at Schiffman, share it in the comments. I forgot I'm always supposed to say like and subscribe. Everybody tells me I'm supposed to say that. Whatever. If you feel like it, like and subscribe. Um, and I'm going to also next do a coding challenge where uh, for any given web page, through a browser extension, I can press the button and replace all the images with images of kittens. So that's what I'll be doing. I'm going to turn these into like a little bit of a coding challenge, and then I'm going to come back and do more stuff. I'm going to add P5 to a content script, lots of other things. So there'll be a whole bunch more videos um, in this Chrome extension uh, bookmarklet playlist. Thanks for watching.